Uh, hello everybody. Um, today I wanted to go over um, the grand the grand battle between Temp60, the funny YouTube guy, and myself. And um, there and I know what you may be thinking. How how did this how did this come? To well, or actually, you're probably not wondering that for the few people who don't know. Uh, basically, um, on the Smogon forums, uh, YouTuber Freezei, um, basically is running these sort of, like, bi-weekly, uh, these, like, little fight nights, so to, so to speak, kind of things, where he pits two well-known, uh, individuals against each other to create, like, this giant sort of, like, fun one-on-one -on -one kind of thing, where a bunch of people come together and it's, like, a big fun thing, you know? So, it's it's really fun. It's an awesome project. It brings a lot of people together. And when Freeze Eye asked me to be a part of it, um, you know, I was like, yeah, I'd be happy to, because you know, I like galvanizing people, bringing the community together, and in general, I just think it's a fun fun idea. So, I was put up against Temp Sixty, and basically, uh, I spent like a few days worth of. Uh, a few days worth building some weird teams uh, for for this battle, or for the series rather, um, as because you can see a flamingo on the screen, and this team was basically uh, there's only two games to go through, <laughs> and you'll uh, you'll see why. So basically, um, uh, I just wanted to kind of go over them, and you know, uh, take it uh, capitalize a little bit on. Uh, the comedy that was this series, or lack of, a uh, lack thereof, if that's your thing. So, let's start here. So, I brought this weird hyper offense team. Uh, well, it's, it's like, yeah, it's a pretty weird hyper offense team, and basically it uses Choice Ban, Flamigo, and Final Gambit, Annihilate. And this was about when the bans dropped. So. <clears throat> for Chiyu and Annihilate and Cyclozar. So this team was, meant to lead, was pretty bad, but it was meant to be just kind of like a fun team, you know? Uh, th throw some weird things out. It has some really weird tactics on it, and I kind of wanted to have fun with it. Um, unfortunately, this was a very awful matchup for this team. <laughs> um, this is a very strong sort of like fat structure. Um, you know, using Covert Cloak, uh, Goldengo, uh, Garganackle infestation packs, um, and apparently a defensive Roaring Moon, which really got in the way of things. And this Quagsire, this thing was the bane of my existence. So this was a pretty awful matchup, and it was near on winnable, in my opinion. And you may think to yourself, well, Annihilate has a phenomenal matchup, right? Well, it's not. It's not built up. So let's just go through it. Uh, Petty people posted cats. Big Joe goes for Final Gambit. That's a dead Tox Pex. And out the rip, that's very good for uh, DD Bolt. Um, it's very good for Valiant. You know, Valiant was any normal set, but sadly, it is not a normal set. Um, Flamigo appreciates it, makes it easier to spam CC into this structure because now, like, his only switch in is Corpse, Fizzed Up Corviknight. Um, so that's really that is a good lead for me. Um, unfortunately. Um, I still have to account for the fact that this Garganackle could actually terastalize into like a fairy type or a ghost type. So unfortunately, Flamigo isn't exactly as like free as you might think. Um, and I it did kind of cost me a bit because I tried to over predict and I and it turned out the Garganackle wasn't even a type that resisted CC on the Terra. So as you'll see. But anyway, I go treads. I want to get my rocks up so I can start like applying pressure more consistently, and also because the quark drive isn't really going to be too helpful for me here. So this is a decent matchup for me. I should have rocked here, but my instinct was that he was going to try to set up his own rocks because his him setting rocks would be more advantageous. Would be actually, like, or at least like soft curing, right? Getting chip on this is nice for Dengo because it turned out it was just mono hacks and T wave. So my thought process was, okay, if he just stays, he could just stay in and I get chip on this, which is going to be good, so I don't have to predict with Flamigo later. So I quake, and that didn't work out at all, because um, he goes right to Corv, which, safe play, he, that was def he had no reason to stay in and risk that. So obviously he 
can just set up his, you know, he could just kind of do his thing. I get my rocks up because I, I don't really care about health in this. Um, or at least not, like, to a point where body press, like, really, body press, like, puts me, because at this moment I didn't know that this was, like, a T-Wave Hex Quebeco, so I didn't really care too much. Um, so, especially because there's a Corviknight here and a Quagsire, so I was just like, okay, rocks up, better. And this is where I need, I try to get a little tricky with my positioning, so I go Chiyu, and, you know, on the debug, because I kind of expected that. He goes Roaring Moon, and this is like a defensive Roaring Moon, so it turns out. Because look at how much- that was a crit. <laughs> this is a heavy duty boost. Um, so I go this, I don't need the quark drive, so I'm okay just trying to get out to life and pressure. And I believe I throw up a Shadow Ball here? No, I just Moon Blast. Yeah. And this is like a defensive gold go, right? So, I catch a T-Wave, and here's where I try to get a little quick tricky with the Destiny Bond. Um, I had no reason to do that. I could have just Shadow Balled again, saved the, saved the Destiny Bond for Garganacle or something. But I recognize that he's probably going to try to throw off a Hex, or... I make it rain because like now that my destiny bond is active he's gonna have to try to attack this GU which that was part of the idea of destiny bond the part of the idea of destiny bond was to give easier switches because you're gonna want to realistically um not attack right and that's good for GU that's good for Flamigo especially because Flamigo like chips itself with Brave Bird and this team is just really weird in general but that doesn't mean it's good <laughs> um so I come in on a hex and I was kind of expecting, like, uh, you know, like, a nasty plot, or, um, not a nasty plot, so to speak, but, like, either, some, some, basically, I wasn't expecting T-Wave, that was the thing you should, I just didn't think it would T-Wave, and that's what mattered to me. Um, so he goes to and Knackle, and I go Flamigo, um, expecting, uh, expecting a, actually, why did I go Flamigo? Hang on, let me, yeah, so I go this, oh, it's because I was expecting a double, I was expecting a double to guard. Not worked out. So I throw off a CC here, I believe. Oh no 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 no! I Terra flying because I was worried about the Terra. The Terra. Um. I was worried about the potential terrestrialization of this guard, which I just could not afford. In retrospect, I definitely should have just said just said fuck it and CC. I don't think there was a reason for me to predict that, especially because there wouldn't wouldn't be able to damage me directly. Um, in a meaningful way, because Salt Gear is not going to do a ton, and, you know, it can just rock. So I should have definitely CC'd here, but I got a little, I got, in my, in the moment, I got a little worried about Terra, especially because, like, Pult, like, Terra Fairy was a problem for this team, especially for the Pult, so I was just kind of like, eh. So, I Brave Bird, I go Valiant, and this is just kind of like, this is kind of footsies for a while, I believe. Like, this is just kind of a really awkward situation for me. And in general, this is just a really awkward matchup, and I got kind of panicked into the Garg, which was definitely, like, I had no reason not to just CC, but, you know. Um, here is where I didn't think it would be, um, I expected it to be, like, U-turn, or, you know, something like that, uh, after it revealed Body Press, which I expected it to click into uh, my uh, thingy, so I just throw off a CC. And as you see, if I just CC'd earlier, I would have been fine, but I didn't. And obviously that costed me. And as you can see, it wasn't even. Um, see, I, see, I got so yeah. I definitely made some awkward. I should have piloted my Flamigo more aggressively. Or like I guess like I should have just kept spamming CC. I recognize CC in the game as a very powerful tool, but I just got really worried about Terra Garganacle, um, which was a fault. Um, I shouldn't have done that. Um, and I've, and so I plot, I have to play it, make, it, make an aggressive play to get this guard checked. So, yep, now it Terra's, and it reveals dark. And, unfortunately for me, uh, that is why CC would have just been completely fine. And now Klaus is getting beaten down. Um, yep, so I go this, and Garganacle at this point just completely brutalizes me. I have to rely on Valiant to actually threaten this out. And Goldango just stonewalls this. So my win condition at this point is Dragon Bolt. I need to... Because now that I know that it's Terra Dark and not Fairy, I see an out with Pult, but I have to find a way to deal with Quagsire. So I just kind of play around a little bit. A little bit of footsies. I try to I try to get some chip on this. Um, 
and I was not being aggressive where I needed to be aggressive, and I was being passive where I shouldn't have been passive. I tried getting catching the corp here. There was no reason for him not to recover there. Um, and I just kind of started, like, I kind of just started to, like, mentally be like, yeah, okay, I don't think I win this. Um, but obviously, like, you know, I needed to find a way to get pulled in as well. And I think, and I think, like, the, and I try to get it on a recover, because, like, I can sub up on this very easily. So I do that. Um, and now I have to play footsies with this Quagsire. So because of the fact that I'm Phantom Force and sub, this basically means I can get a lot of lefties recovery in this thing's face. So... I feel like I can realistically PP solve the stake of this recovers. So this is a so now this is like a bunch of like a series of 50 50s because I have to see or not. I guess it wouldn't be technically that, but it's still like I have. I'm in a situation where I kind of have to consider the uh, Quagsire and the Quagsire's like recover P usage. The earthquakes get the where earthquake does like 40 to 50, and I'm trying to use Phantom Force to get safe a lefty's recovery back. <laughs> Which is why I start mixing into my plays, because it still gets shipped, so it can force recover. And now here I try to get a little gutsy. I want I start to like try to predict like earthquakes and stuff. Um, but obviously Temp has no reason not to just start recovering. And yeah, so this is just like kind of like a lot of footsies, and unfortunately I start to get very like I start to get very like overly aggressive there, to where now he I can't get a substitute safely again. And yeah, now I just kind of, like, get knocked, blown down by this, because I can never uh, out-damage this. Um, I think I should have phantomed here. Yeah, I definitely should have, but... Yeah, and this is where things... I needed a crit there to win. If I got a crit, I probably could have had a chance. But, yeah, no, and this is just where the game ends. Um, the Quagsire was very annoying, but... And I obviously could have played this game just generally better. But the matchup was also really bad, and I needed to kind of just, like... I was trying to make some like bold reads but i was like making bold reads at the wrong intervals and that really just kind of costed me and yeah as you can see like i'm just getting turns wrong and i just lose the game because of it so unfortunately lose game one and <laughs> yeah uh so let's get to the next game uh okay is this gonna work here we go you're not you're, you're not seeing this wrong there's a Lachonk on your screen. So, let's just see how this game goes. <laughs> Annihilate destroys. I recognized that very early on. And I needed to find a way to get Annihilate in safely. And unfortunately, with that Corviknight in the picture, that, that was a bit hard. Um, however, I did see it as a very good win condition, and I saw it as a very do potentially dominating win. If I played well, let's see how this goes. Um, so here's Pex, and I lead Meowskarada because my thought process is I can get a knock, I can just rub like Covert Cloaks, and it'll generally just like make decent progress. So here's what happens I get Baneful, and you know, that's like whatever, right? And in retrospect, the moment I saw this, I should have switched out instantly. I didn't. I thought he would just P-jab. I get infestationed, and I lose my Masquerado. So, horrendous five turns. I lose one of my important positioning tools, which would have been really great for helping get my Annihilate in, and instantly, I'm already on the back foot. Very winnable, but I'm on the back foot. I need to use my... I need to be cautious with how I use my Annihilate, or get it in. Thankfully, it substitutes, so that's, like, really strong into, like, pecs and stuff. But unfortunately, we're back in a situation of footsies. And because of the fact that Pex is alive, so I know that this, this, this is like the same team as last time. So like I kind of already have like I have a bit of an information advantage. So I know this so I know that my that Horton Great Tusk can check Goldango because it doesn't have make it rain. So as long see so yeah, I get rid of the helmet, I want that on as soon as possible so Annihilate can do its thing safely. Um, you know, so I know that for a fa almost a near fact, this is Covert Cloak, because Covert Cloak has really been rising in usage to check Garkanackle. So I'm getting chip. I'm just kind of like throwing out some knocks. We're getting some. And so I recognize this as a scenario where if I could just force its roosts down, I could also get Great Tusk in a phenomenal position. Like, this is a good matchup for me. 
and I just need to position things. And, you know, like, again, Annihilate, absolute destruction. Um, and I can, like, PP stall this, which is the, one of the only few things I can check Great Tusk here. So, like, I have options. This is a very winnable game. And this is, like, and I can just, like, and with Pex, and Infestation, and Helmet, I can force Roosts with ease. So that's my thought process here. And... And now he goes Dengo, because, like, we know, this is Covert Cloak. So I recognize that I want to... So my thought process... What was my thought process here? Oh, yeah, the Infestation was freed. So I knew he was going to try to switch into, like, Gold Dengo, because I thought this would be Covert Cloak. So I wanted to kind of catch that. So I go into my Great Tusk, gets Lefty's Recovery, and I don't think he'd draw Brave Bird, given the situation. So I go this. There's Corv. And I think I just knock. Yep, knock is super free in this scenario. Chip. Uh, lefty's recovery. Oh, and this is a horrible turn. I didn't expect him to raw Brave Bird, um, given the Pex, and I thought he would try to recognize what I was trying to do with the PP stalling, so I make an extremely aggressive play that I had no reason to make, and I take 69. That is a horrible turn for me, and instantly I'm in a really horrid position, like, near losing position. So, Instantly, I'm like, okay, how do I... I need to get my Annihilate back. I see it out, though. Because my Corviknight, it has less IVs and speed. So I start to think to myself, okay, maybe I could get my Annihilate back with Lefty's Recovery if I position it such that I bring it in at the end of the turn with my U-turn on Corviknight. And because of the fact my Corviknight has a Rocky Helmet, I can not only... I can force Chip and get Lefty's back. So I can... So I can still make progress while getting my Annihilate back. So I'm not out of the woods and instantly i start to and this and we kind of go into this chain for a while and i try to substitute because i expect him to not want to brave bird i didn't think he'd brave bird again a very aggressive play but i thought i could afford to make it given that um i didn't think he'd brave bird given what i thought he would be seeing what i was trying to do and he wouldn't try to let me do it unfortunately uh he does it again so my annihilate is still low is now lower but but at this point, I'm like, okay, I can't afford any more aggressive plays. And unfortunately, Temp is just, like, getting me. He has my pulse with what I'm, with my plays. So I need to get my Great Tusk. So I'm getting my Great Tusk recovered back as well. And we're slowly kind of going through the works. I don't expect him to stay in because of that that one one So I expect Corv or a switch. So I'm just, like, trying to forcibly get my Lefty recovered back. And I can't afford to do the cycle again, so I just do this. Because I, because he just isn't, he's just not contesting it. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying, I'm trying to U-turn, trying to get rocket helmet chip, I'm trying to slowly position my annihilate to lefties back. And this is a pretty long game. <laughs> this is a really annoyingly long game. Um, so this is just kind of a cycle. We go great tusk. We go to get this back in front of the building. Go. We go annihilate to lefties recovery. We slow U-turn to get rocket helmet. You kind of just see what's happening here. And the roosts, roosts are being drained out. So this is now out of roosts. And this cycle is presuming. And this is where things take a turn. He has Terra Dark Goldengo, which is weird. Um, so because of the fact that he has no roosts, I'm like, okay, you know what? I think I can get away with just like clicking Earthquake. And because of the fact he Terra, he's now vulnerable to T-Spikes. Which to me is very good. So I just Earthquake because I didn't think it would really cost much given he has no roosts. So I do it. 38. And he gets Big Chip with plus 2 plot. Um, that's a problem, because now it's in range of ha potential hazards from, uh, the Quag Sire and the Knackle. So, I'm like, oh shit. So, I go this, I try to get some Salkir, uh, Salkir action going. Or I double back on a Corviknight. And, like, this is bad. So, I'm trying to Infestation, get some chip going. And this is a really, like, big footsie scenario here. And he gets his rocks up, and my I need to be conscientious of my Great Tusk. Um, so I'm trying to, like slowly weave my way in by threatening out Quagsire, because I keep thinking it's going to come in to try and set up some spikes. Actually, do I do that? Oh no, my Great Tusk is already dead. Because of the, yeah. But anyway, it catches this. But I'm basically, like, thinking I need to keep the Quagsire out. That thing's really annoying. So I just start salt curing, and I'm okay with that now that this is poisoned, so I just kind of do it even though I know this is Covert Cloak. So, I go Corv. I'm Terra Normal, so, like, I'm okay in a pinch. Because even with my Great Tusk so low, I can always tear a normal this to make it so I'm immune to Hex and it just still won't this. So that's why I sent Corvin, and I just body press to keep the pressure on. 
So here I U-turn, I believe. Yep. And then I go knack. And I go this. I infest for chip. I go knackle again. I get it's kind of a cycle. And unfortunately, yeah, he just he has and I start to iron defense. This is one of my win conditions at this point, now that his dengo is this is like has this horrible position. Unfortunately the pecs is still alive. If the pecs weren't alive, I would be able to just kind of like do this kind of stuff, right? But unfortunately, this is this is another cycle. Um and yeah, this is I, I this is my spinner. Oh wait, I didn't show you guys the horrid turn. The turn that I just kind of lost all of my momentum. And these hazards being up is so bad for my annihilate. I'm in such a terrible position. Uh, Alright, let me show you guys. I, I completely skipped over the turn that I just, like, lost everything. Or lost my men. Uh, here it is. Yes, I remember this. Oh, this turn makes me, made me so sad. So I go, I U-turn here, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know what? I just completely forget that I U-turned here. I completely forget. I didn't realize that I clicked U-turn. I thought that this was a hard switch, and he was going to set up a spike or something. And so I wanted to sack this to get my Annihilate bit. I return to Tusk. <laughs> and everybody flayed me for that. I flamed myself for it too. Absolutely unforgivable. Like, this was such an awful sequence here. I had no reason to do that. I had the positional advantage. I could have just went Annihilate, or could have gone, like, something. Or Pax, right? But, like, I just... Yeah, it's just awful. I lose... I get kind of tilted at this point. I'm in a really tricky position. And I'm about to lose 6-0 to a little chonk team. Just because of how awfully I pivoted around that. Even though I had win conditions. And I'm just, like, awful. And I'm just being way too... Like... I'm being way too meek with my Annihilate. I'm not using it aggressively enough. And I'm just, like... And I'm just, like, trying to... Pit, I'm, I'm way too worried about Salt Cure and Toxic and all of this stuff. That I'm just not being aggressive with my Annihilate. And I'm trying to find, like, a perfect situation to get it in so I can just start winning, or try to win. But now that it's so low, it took all that Brave Bird shit, and it's just, like, it's such a terrible situation for me. And it's just, like, it's just really unfortunate. So this is where I get my Annihilate then. I sack my packs because I'm, like, so that way I can get a hard switching. Unfortunately, the, the hazard just barely knocked me out of substitute range, which is horrible. Absolutely terrible. So I'm pretty much forced to attack this, even though I would have loved to substitute Substituting here probably would maybe would have won the game, actually. But I just can't substitute here. I have no choice. So I have to drain punch this, which really sucks for me, because now I have to take this tank the salt cure, and now my annihilate can't do things. So I have to just spam drain punch and pray. Um and get back to health get healthy again. Oh, and I bulk up here expecting that. So I do that. Unfortunately, I'm salt cured out of range of substitute yet again. I would have subbed here if I could. Actually, you know what? Could I have substituted on the bulk up turn? Yeah, I absolutely could. Actually, no, I would have died to a Salt Cure. So I had a bulk up. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, the Salt Cure it was just so unfortunate. And this is where Lechonk, Lechonk actually comes in the carry. Because now I can't heal enough to actually like get a substitute up in front of this. So he gets a safe switch into Quagsire. And I just lost my... And my Annihilate is still out of subrange. So it basically just... <laughs> it basically just saved his skin against the substitute. Because <laughs> look at that. And now I just lose because I can't get enough damage on this. This just has unaware and kills my my thing. And I have to pray that I get lucky with the Corviknight. And this is just curtains. I got really tilted that after like that horrible like mismanagement of hazards, sacking the Great Tusk at that, that U-turn, and it just like it went to crap and I'm really not happy with how this played, well, how I played this at all. Temp was a really good, played this really well though. Um, and I think just like the TLDR is, anxiety is a thing you have to you have to manage in Pokemon. Um, you absolutely have to be able to manage your timing and your anxiety and your like your thoughts and tilt. That's an active factor in this game, and it and your mental is so important. And that's like a big thing the tournament play too. Like I've played in World Cup, right and. Anxiety almost, like, anxiety is just so, so devastating. And I just realized I lost that I forfeit, right? So, yeah, I lost 2-0 to Temp 16. He's a good player, so I'm not too beat up about it. I was pretty upset at the time, though, because of the little chonk. 
in the moral diff, and I got flamed by everybody for this. Uh, I had people DMing me um, about how like badly I played, and like yeah, I didn't play well. I didn't. I, I made some really awful. Like I wasn't expecting infestation, even though I should have. I had infestation in my home packs, and I just completely disregarded things, and I got tilted. I sacked this. So you have to. So I think the takeaway from this is consider your mental. Try to calm down. Take a deep breath. <laughs> it's like you know, anxiety is a thing, and you have to be able to manage that. So, anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope this was illuminating in some way, and uh, hope you guys had fun with this as well. I tried to have fun with it. <laughs> it didn't turn out as well as I wanted it to. That's fine. Um, anyway, yep. I hope you all have to take care, and uh, yeah, bye.